please note that each map level in the game can have different textures and attributes. The numbers I've plugged in for clouds, rain, and fog may look great in one map, but look very different in other maps. What I'll share with you is merely a guide to get you started. I encourage you to adjust numerical values to make the effects work better for you in your chosen map. Good evening, John O'Flaherty, the B3 Burner, and today we are in Beam NG, the car game, to demonstrate how you take a sunny sky and turn it into a rainy sky. And we're going to use the East Coast USA default map in Maine as our uh, example. And there are things we basically want to do. One, we want to make it overcast. Two, we want to take these white clouds and turn them gray. Three, the sun doesn't disappear on its own, so we need to make the sun disappear. And then four, we need to make it rain. Five, we want to bring in some fog to make it a little bit more uh, low visibility, like in a driving rainstorm. And then six, we'll emulate lightning overhead without thunder. Uh, oh, one other thing I want to try to get the rain sound. So we're going to go into the New World Editor. That's the one that they prefer you use. They're trying to slowly phase out the old one. And we're going to go into Level Objects. That's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the sky gray. And in order to do that, we need to make it overcast. And in order to make it overcast, we need to get into the clouds. So we're in the clouds section and it's an openable folder and inside it sits clouds and clouds one. That just means that there's two different levels of clouds. We're going to go into clouds and we move to the right hand column and you see the first thing here, base color, exposure, coverage, and don't worry about wind speed and height. Uh, the base color is white, as you can see, so the first thing we want to do is stay down the grayscale line. We don't want to come over to the red, uh, because that's going to look funky. And we're going to go down to about here. And you can see it took just a few clouds and, and made them, let's make it a little bit more medium gray. Okay. Not very convincing, but don't worry. We'll bring the coverage up to 10. And all of a sudden, things look a little bit more ominous. Now that we've done that, let's bring the height up from 3 to 5. Not much of an impressive change, but a little bit of a change. I'm going to make it a little darker. There we go. Good enough. Now we're going to go to clouds one and do the same thing. I don't like that base color. So we're going to bring them down until they match or are slightly more ominously dark. How about that? Yeah, that'll work. Coverage will again bring up to 10. There we go. Now that's looking more ominous as we look around. Oh yeah, it looks like it's going to rain any second, doesn't it? Now there's a problem but with that, but I'm going to get to this in a second. We could change the exposure, but that changes the brightness of the clouds, and we've already done it by changing the actual physical color. No need to do both, except, and I'll show you, let's go from 1.3 to 3.0. Yeah, see, all it did was brighten it. I was going to say it gives it more definition and you can actually see the cloud textures better, but uh, the answer is no. So we leave that alone. The main thing is we want to change coverage and we want to change height. I changed the height of clouds to uh, 5. So let's take clouds 1 and make it lower. We'll change it to 3. Yeah, I like that. 
The really dark ones are hovering lower toward the surface. Okay, so we've got a problem. If in fact you haven't already noticed what it is, A, the sun is still shining through supposedly overcast skies, and two, the sun is reflecting brightly off the ground and casting really contrasted, very stark shadows, like it was a clear sunny day. And we started with a clear sunny day, so that makes sense, but we want to get rid of that. So first thing we want to do is now go to sky, sun sky. The size of the sun is currently 1.0. We want to move that, change that to zero. We have to change brightness. This is really important. We could uncheck cast shadows, but that leaves it just as bright, but without shadows. We don't want it to be just as bright. We want the ground to be dimmer. So we take brightness and move from one to zero. Oh, now it looks really dim and dreary, like, like it's about to rain. And oh, see, the sun's disappeared. It's a combination of two things. One, you got to take the sun size and bring it down to zero. But then you also have to take uh, the brightness and bring it down to zero. The two work hand in hand. So now that we have it uh, dark and cloudy and gray, now it's time to bring on the rain and rain is down over here and we have rain coverage and we have rain single drops and those names pretty much are what they imply coverage is the wide overall area and single drops is looking at individual drops on a on more of a micro level versus a macro level um, in some cases i don't really notice a difference it has rain coverage above rain single drops, but let's go to rain single drops. Number of drops. We're going to go from 0 to 2,500. And all of a sudden it looks like a driving monsoon. All right. But it only looks like it's falling in one specific area. Very, like there's one little rain shaft and it's uh, falling to infinity in a center but not really going anywhere else that's okay we'll fix that i'm not not too worried about that we have to draw an imaginary box and give it width and height box width we're going to bring from 10 to 16 and height we're going to bring from 6 to 10. And it doesn't take much difference to change how things are and the nature of it and now it's gone to more of a pulsating motion which uh, which it's not doing anymore okay good we clean that up uh, rendering drop size we're going to leave it at 0.08 splash size we're going to move that down to 0.20 from 0.25 there we go splash in splash, uh, splash animation in milliseconds, we'll leave that at 80. Animate splashes, yes. Drop animate in milliseconds. We're going to move that from 0 to 1,000. Okay, there we go. Fade distance, this is really important. This is when drops appear to fade. Fade distance 25, we're going to move it from 5 to 25. Fade distance end. We're going to move it from 10 to 50. All right, there we go. And now it's starting to look eh, maybe a little bit more spread out. Hard to say, but it does definitely have the illusion now that uh, you're getting wet just looking at it. All right, and that's kind of how we want rain to be. Use true billboards. Yes. I don't know what any of that means, but we're just I'm just telling you what settings I use. Use lighting. Yes. Glow intensity, we're not going to mess with that. Reflect. Yes. Rotate with camera velocity. It's already checked. Collision. We want to do collision. We want to hit players. We want to hit vehicles. So it's hard to tell, but 
I suppose it appears to be hitting the pickup truck, and is it? I don't know. You tell me. Yeah, see, there's a couple of splashes hitting the roof of the truck. Not often, but there it is. And we're done with that. Now we go to rain coverage. And this is where I think we're going to make our animate splashes. We're going to do just like the other one. Number of jumps, 2,500. Now notice that makes it look like a monsoon. We clearly don't want that, but we're, we're going to change some things. This already defaulted to uh, box width 16, 10, box height 10. I must have left it that way. Drop size, 0.08. Calms it down, calms down the monsoon. Splash size, 0.20. There we go. Splashes in microseconds, 80, yes. Animate splashes, yes. Drop, animate in milliseconds, a thousand. So we're going to go from zero to a thousand. There we go. Fade distance, same as the other. 25. Fade distance end. 50. Right? And again, we're going to use true billboards. Check. Use lighting. Check. Glow intensity will ignore. Reflect. Check. Rotate with the camera velocity already. Check. Collision. Do collision hit players. Ah, as soon as I said hit players, look, it created ground splashes, which is what we wanted. They're a little funky and cartoonish looking, but it definitely gives the effect of hitting the pavement, which... I don't know, it just really drives home that immersion a little bit more closely. Definitely a better situation. Hit players, hit vehicles. That's looking pretty good to me. So in our last video section, we created clouds, blocked out the sun, blocked out the shadows, made it darker, and we made it rain. Now, we're going to turn to the task of creating the rain sound because right now the rain is silent and we're going to eventually add some lightning. First, let me bring up the audio level a little bit more. Normally I would keep this around 15. I brought it up to 50. Let's move it up to 75 so we can really hear what's going on. And I'm going to hush up for a second and let you listen. And what you're hearing is birds and the waves crashing into the shore because uh, the shoreline is only about a half a mile downhill over here. None of what you're hearing is falling rain. We're going to have to create that ourselves. And in order to do that, let us once again open our New World Editor, the same one we were working with before. Only now, we want to go to this menu bar, this ribbon up top, and it's not really well advertised how you get to new... Uh, new phenomenon but you come over here there's one of those insects went, that went flying by you get to the plus sign create an object you ple plus, press on the plus sign and a new ribbon bar opens up and you have a whole bunch of new choices here um, you can create water you can create a new sun you could have two suns on the sky if you really wanted to. don't know why you'd want to do that. But if you were starting a map bare bones and you wanted to add the sun, uh, you could do that. Church bells. 
Yes, they think of everything. So, if we want to add the sound of rain, we go here, sound emitter. Okay. Once we hit sound emitter, it opens up a brand new item called SFX emitter underscore one. We had emitter one. So now we come down here under media track and we have to create an audio track. Over here we have none. So we click where the three dots are and half of it's off the screen so I'm going to put it over here. And you have various sound choices you can work with. Crash sounds, glass breaking sounds, uh, piano smash sounds. Um, don't know why you need all that but we're going to get right to ambient. Uh, ambient rain medium. This one over here. And we're going to hit it. And I don't know at what point you're going to hear the rain. But it's it might come up on this mouse click. We'll see. And there you go. In fact, it's so loud almost to be a little deafening. And <laughs> here. I'm going to come out of it for a second and turn it down. All right. So you can definitely see that that is a different and more f fuller and complete sound than what we had just listening to the ocean in the distance. It sounds much more local. Um, what's more, if we go inside the truck, it's as though you were inside listening to the uh, rainfall. So that's actually kind of cool. So now that we have the sound of rain, let's add some lightning. And in order to do that, our second menu via the plus sign is already open and we want to come over here to the light bulb icon and it says point light. Okay. So we click on that and down here below the player is a point light. There's our point light and we can adjust it vertically uh, along the x-axis, along the y-axis. Uh, we're we're going to do this by the numbers so that I, I don't know why when I press on the screen a second time it created a second point light, but below the player uh, we have the emitter one and the point light one, and we only want one. So, okay, so we need to dial in the coordinates, and the coordinates I have to create lightning over the gas station is x equals hold up I need to be able to see this uh, x714 decimal 413 enter y equals negative 15 decimal 413 Know what I messed up over here? I was looking at the wrong line. 714 on X 832. Decimal 832. There we go. And then finally on the Z axis, we need to be much higher. This is in meters. Decimal 105 uh, or 105 decimal 862. 862. Enter. And that puts, if you look, that puts it way up over there. So if that's 105 meters multiplied by three, that puts the point light about 300 feet above the ground. Uh, well, if we were having cloud to ground lightning, uh, 
it could easily see a bolt uh, three, oh, 300 feet up. All right. So we want to change the radius. We want to be able to see the lightning reflect off the ground. And it's only going to illuminate within the sphere's internal area. And we want it to hit the ground. So the first thing we're going to have to do is increase the radius from 5 to 2,500. And now it's all around us. We want to leave as enabled, checked. The color, we want to make it a hot bluish white. So in order to do that, we have to de-emphasize the red. We'll move it down from 255 to 216. So we'll have to dial it in like this. Two fifteen, two forty-eight, two fifty-five, two fifty-five. Guess what? That is going to do it. So I don't know how you click on these and make them work. I, I don't think so. I think those are readouts, not inputs. You have to use the color swatch. So I said I wanted it at two sixteen. It fell on two fifteen. I wanted it at two forty-nine. It fell on two forty-eight, and. Uh, Blue, I wanted at 255 and stayed at 255. So it's kind of a gonna flash as a hot aqua, and that, that's fine. That's fine. That's close enough. Brightness. The next thing we want to do is we want to make this real bright. So we're gonna bring brightness up from a large, a huge increase from one to one million. One zero 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 zero. Enter really wish it had separating commas. We definitely want to see the lightning cast shadows. Now in real life, lightning is spread out over distance, so it casts very blurry shadows. Here the shadows are going to be too sharp because it's a point light, but uh, that's okay. Uh, having, it, having it exact isn't so important as um, having it uh, having the effect there in the first place. Priority one, we'll leave it at that. Animate, definitely we need an animation. And the most important thing over here, animation type. You have several types to choose from here. Let's move it over here. You can have none, which is where we're at now. A blinking light animation. A firelight animation, which is like a uh, rotating a uh, light globe on top of a fire engine that goes around and around. Uh, we, we could have a light flicker, like it's gonna burn out any second. We need this one, lightning light animation. And we click on it. And pretty soon we're gonna see it. Animation period, we are gonna move that from 1 to 0.75. Enter. Animation phase is, is at one, and we're going to leave it there. Texture size, we're going to leave it at 512. That's the texture of the light or the shadows. We don't want it too sharp. Shadow distance, here we go. It's only a 400, we want it at 5000. Shadow softness, it's at 0 0.150, we want it at 1. Number of splits, it's at 1, we want to keep it there. Log weight, 0 0.910, that's fine. Fade start distance, 5,000. Bring it up from 0 to 5,000. And at some point we should see lightning and for some reason I don't. Don't you just love it when things don't go right? Maybe it has to be saved. We're going to save the level. I'm going to click off on animate and restart the animation. Okay, well, I tell you what, we can't get the lightning to flash, but if you wanted to try this at home, this is how you would do it. You press the plus sign press the 
uh, the, the point light and you would go through all the steps that I described. That's how you go through the procedure. I saved it as such. I want to double check if it got saved. Let's um, come in here real quick. Uh, beam folder. Twenty-two levels. Oh, well, that's interesting. Why didn't that get saved? Well, main decals. Main Monday, June seventh, eight twenty-nine. Right now, it is eight thirty-two. So something got. F something got saved in the JSON file. The point is it's got this morning's date on it. You know, it's like trying to get a train circus seal to uh, act on command. You know, the only time he, he doesn't want to perform is when you know, people are watching, which is exactly the problem we're having with the lightning. Anyway, that's how you get rain sound. And if the lightning worked, that's how you get lightning. Hey, we're back, and guess what? I got the lightning to work. Okay, for those of you who do this, I know the secret now. After you save the lightning in the game, you have to exit the game and come back in, and then you will see it. Uh, actually, something that was a little bit confusing. First, I saved the game I saved my level changes while I was in the game, and I, th I think you saw me do that. When I went to exit the game later while I was off recording, trying to uh, figure out what the heck was going on, when I went to exit the game, it asked me one more time, or it said, you have s changes that are unsaved, do you want to save them, yes or no? And I thought to myself, well, I've already saved. Why is it asking me again? All I could figure is the lightning didn't take until I saved it that second time, exited the game, and came back in. There it is. So, you want to create lightning. Uh, it's not one of those uh, changes like the clouds, the color of the clouds, the rain, sound, rain sound. Those changes happen instantly as soon as you incorporate them. Lightning is apparently one of those things that it doesn't happen right away. You have to exit the game and then come back in and then you'll see it. Now the sound of the rain will travel up with us wherever we go. I'm gonna show you. So no matter how far we go away from the truck or take the truck with us, the sound of the rain goes everywhere, and that's a good thing. The lightning, if you notice, has a very short span and already it's over here and we're moving away from it. Eventually we'll get out of the lightning range and you won't see it at all. So if you want lightning throughout the whole town and it becomes impractical to make one big light dome that covers the whole town. You have to have multiple light zones flashing at different times, which is a little bit more realistic because in a real thunderstorm, uh, you have lightning coming from several parts of the sky, all flashing at different intervals. Um, if it's a very complex storm, especially. Uh, so. You can see, let's stop right at this view and look down the road. You can see that it's brightest by the gas station just between these two traffic lights and dimmer in the foreground. And that's how you make lightning. I want to mention one other thing real quick. Last thoughts on point light and sound emitter. Point light, clouds, anything else I've already discussed, you can undo it by hitting delete. For some reason, the SFX emitter, I don't want to do it, but if you hit delete object, it deletes the 
name or the, the wording from this list, but you cannot get rid of the sound. Once it's in there, it's in there to stay. So just just be aware of that, that if you ever want to undo the sound of the rain, uh, you're going to have to get rid of the whole level and start over again from scratch. And the final thing we want to talk about is adding a low visibility layer using fog. And there is a fog feature in this to simulate a low visibility layer while it's raining. Kind of adds to the mystique and the realism of the rain experience. Uh, you know, in a very heavy driving rainstorm, you can't necessarily see the outline of the clouds, the medium height clouds, a sort of a lower scud level known as... Uh, nimbus clouds move in and and sort of obscure everything around it almost like a fog so we want to create that effect i have a caveat though i've experienced this before and i'm gonna tell you or advise you on how to handle it and what not to do so the first thing we do is once again we go into the new world editor and we are going to return to level object and we're going to hit infos over here toggle down and now I'm in the level info and over here is fog color notice it's bluish I don't agree with this but the way they the reason why they made fog level bluish was because it's supposed to emulate the haze layer that you would get where the ocean horizon meets the sky and that's about the color of that but when you're trying to use it as a fog that you pull in toward you you really want it to be more gray so what we're going to do is first we're going to introduce let's go point zero zero five and there's the fog, but it's a blue fog. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to squeeze onto the gray scale. Oh boy, that would sure help if it actually worked. Oh, you know what? I think I did this wrong. An important point to learn. If you have a sky object, you cannot control the fog from the level info. You only use the level info section, this section over here, to control fog density. As soon as you want to change the color, you need to go over here. Sky, sky, sun, sky. Now here we have a fog scale, and this is the one we need to work with. It's very important that you realize that. Now, as I come over here, I can make it all the way black, I can make it gray, let's make it a medium gray, and I can still see the blue horizon in the distance through it. So we're going to want to uh, change that. Let's go back to the level info. If you're going to make fog, you need to change the fog height. That's right. level info our fog height is only 2500 feet we need to make it 500,000 we'll move 2500 to 500,000 there we go like if Nimbus had moved in or fog had moved in while it was raining it blocks out the other clouds and it blocks out the horizon and makes it look like you really socked in with rain, which is exactly what we want. Now let's go back to Sun Sky, Fog Scale, and make it a darker gray. We could darken it all the way to the point where it looks like night. We could make it all the way white. I want something really dreary looking like that 
so we'll make our fog scale about it's 73 now let's make it down to 64 65 close enough and there you go so we'll now hit file save level come out of there and now when we look around we have rain we have clouds we have fog we have lightning the only thing we have we have the sound of rain the only thing we're missing is the sound of thunder and they have not incorporated thunder sound yet so that we have to live without but we've gone from a clear sunny sky to a socked in rainstorm with low visibility included and i can make the visibility lower than that if i want to but i think uh five one one hundredth or whatever i picked is good enough A very important thing that I neglected to tell you about fog color is that it will not stay gray. If you leave the game and come back in, it reverts back to blue. And it doesn't matter whether you save it or not. So each time, you'll have to go into Level Object Sky, Sun Sky, Fog Scale, and change it back to gray, medium gray, or dark gray yourself. After a certain version, the color of the sky was dependent upon time of day. So every time, here let me show you this, every time we open up the game and it's 9.07 in the morning, that's early to mid-morning the game tells the fog to color medium blue so that it matches the color of the sky at the horizon at about that time of day. I also want to show you one other thing. It's gray right now, right? The only time you can keep the fog gray or change its color is when time is standing still. See this? Time 907. If I were to change the time, look at that. I just bumped it from 907 to 947 and it turned it pink immediately. Also, if I put it in play mode, okay, so it's ticking through the day rather quickly, mind you, but let's go out of that. Now let's go back into our fog scale in our sun sky menu. Now if I try to change it and move back to gray, you can see it's trying to do it, but as soon as I let go of it, it bounces right back to blue. Let's try an extreme example, red. I hit red and it stays red for a little bit so long as I click the mouse but as soon as I let go of the mouse boom back to blue now if I were to stop time from moving and I'll demonstrate that by going back out of the editing menu and back into time and I uncheck the time movement check mark. Now let's go back into the editor, fog scale. Now I can do whatever I want. I want red fog. There we go with the red fog. I can change color any way I want. Green fog, yellow fog, deep blue fog, purple fog, try that. But as soon as I go into time, TOD, play, there it is, play. As soon as I hit play, that purple is gonna bounce back to default blue, and there it goes. So, it stands to reason that if you want 
gray fog, you're either going to have to be satisfied with the fact that time doesn't move, it stands still, that's the only way it'll hold its gray, and even if you save it in the save file over here, save level, as soon as you exit the game and come back in, the moment it reintroduces itself at exactly 9.07 in the morning, even though you didn't play it, that instant burst of coming on is like hitting play for a split second. That's enough to turn your gray fog blue again. So gray fog is only available while you're within the game, within one session of the game, and you have to adjust it so, and do so each time you go back in. You know what? Let's try something. The fog is blue right now. What if we move to sun scale to noon? Not much of a change. There we go. Now notice at 6.14 in the morning, sunrise is at 6 o'clock. 14 minutes after sunrise, it takes on more of an orangish gray. That's uh, not by accident. Let's back up. So at 5.47, it's a deep gray. Then as we move up to 6.05, 6.10, 6.11, it's more of an orange-yellow. Then as we near 6.25, it's more of the gray you would expect. So I guess if you want it to be right, you could always go and freeze your time at 6 o'clock and save it. Now as we work our way toward 6.45, it's already turning blue because the sun is getting higher up in the sky. And it remains that way all the way through 12 o'clock, 12.14, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock. Okay, now we're getting close to 5. It's 4.46 in the afternoon. It's 48. Now we're at 5 o'clock, and as we approach, there we go, 5.35. We're 25 minutes before sunset. Now it's turning more the gray you want. So you just have to move time to the gray you want, and then it will remember it. So if you want gray fog and you want it to keep it through the save, move it to a time about 25 minutes or 30 minutes after sunrise or 25, 30 minutes before sunset. And sunrise is at 6 a.m., sunsets at 6 p.m., so do the subtractions in the time or additions and figure it out accordingly. There you go. That's how you turn a sunny sky into a rainy sky on B3 Burner. And I hope you got something out of this. You take care. Goodbye.